Good morning and welcome to A Closer Look. I'm your host, Linda Fontaine. Today, my guest is Jo Cullen. She is Executive Director of Jeremiah School in Johnson City. It's a school for autistic children. Thank you for being here today. Thanks so much for having me. Tell us a little bit about Jeremiah School. Now, it's not very old. It's just a few years old, right? Yes, um, it was started in 2015 and uh, it was started really by three parents, three mums, moms, <laughs> who um, <laughs> all had uh, children with autism and um, the school system, they just weren't coping in, in a regular school. Yeah. So they decided to start, start their own school, which is a huge leap of faith, you know, to, sure. to start a school. It's a massive undertaking. Um, so they started, they were based in Grace Fellowship Church and they ran for one year, 2015 to 16, and then they took a year out to um, sort of learn some lessons from the first year. And uh, during that time I got involved and we moved to Coalition for Kids building. So Coalition for Kids is a great charity and they allow us to use their building during the day because they're an after-school program. Okay. So it's a beautiful relationship. Um, and we've been there since 2017. And where is that located? It's off Princeton, um, Susanna Street, which is off Princeton Road in Johnson City, so North Johnson City. Okay, very good. So the three moms that started this, I know that's been a blessing. How many students do you have now? Just starting this new school year coming up, we'll have 19. Um, we started with five mm -hmm. and uh, we've grown steadily um, and we'll be at 19. Wow. So we don't want to grow too quickly because I think you've got to be very careful that you don't, um, you don't outgrow your ability to, to deliver the program you want to deliver. Um, mm -hmm. I think sometimes you can expand too quickly and lose the quality. So we've had over 65 um, sort of expressions of interest for the school. There's a lot of interest out there, mm -hmm. um, but we keep just growing by five or six each year, just a, one class basically each year. So what are the grade levels there? Well, we don't really talk about grades as such. Okay. We, we, we go by age. So right. the youngest we take in is a nine-year-old and we go all the way up to 18. Although if they want to stay a bit longer, we just graduated one at 19. Mm. Um, so at the moment it's nine to 18. Um, and they, within that range, there's a, a huge spread of ability, um, both academically and obviously socially and emotionally. Um, children with autism, you know, it, it doesn't matter what grade you're assigned to, you mm. are where you are. And right. so, like no that. matter where the child is, they come into school and we move them forward. Mm -hmm. um, it's very difficult to be in a seventh grade class because that's your age, but be doing a fourth grade math curriculum. You right. know? And, and, and similarly, you could be a seventh grader, but extremely bright mm -hmm. and be doing, needing an eleventh grade curriculum. And for public school, that's very hard. But for us, we, we just literally take them, as I say, they start where they are and we move them forward, no matter which subject that's in, they, you know. Um. So is this an accredited school? I mean, this is just like a regular school. They will graduate and get credits for graduating and things like that? They can do. Um, we're actually not accredited yet. We're okay. going through that this year. Um, but it really depends on the child because the, the autism spectrum is very broad. Mm -hmm. So. For some of our students, um, they're definitely on a college path and they do high school classes such as chemistry and physics and all the others. Yes. And they will graduate with a typical high school diploma. But others, other of, of our students are not really on that sort of academic path. They're mm. more likely to be just needing um, job skills, life skills, and basic academics, functional academics, you know, using money, telling the time, functional lit literacy um, and we'll be working with them to find their path into a job so that's part of it. I like that so it's basically it sounds almost like it's treated like a homeschool situation but at your facility because you don't have um, traditional grades so to speak like you said they are where they are and you, you are met according to your needs am I understanding that right? Yes I think um, we don't claim to be like a public school. Mm -hmm. um, the whole reason our students have ended up 
coming to us is because the, the public school hasn't worked for them. Now that's mm -hmm. in no way the fault of the public school system or the teachers. It's just that children with autism have very specific needs sure. and they have a lot of sensory issues. Right. So if you imagine a typical public school, um, particularly middle school, high school age, mm -hmm. very big, very busy, very noisy, mm -hmm. um, 25 to 30 in a class, then you know you sit for an hour, you've got a five minute transition, you sit for another hour, uh, very fast paced work. And for a lot of children with autism, that's overwhelming. Sure. Um, just the noise level in the classroom, it can be the lights, mm -hmm. it can be the proximity of people around them. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, it's just a very difficult environment for right. children with autism. And um, the exam, the whole testing regime of a typical school is, is difficult. Mm -hmm. So we offer a completely different approach. So what, the way I look at it is, um, we place the child in the middle and we build everything around them and their okay. needs rather than the child fitting into an institution that's already designed mm -hmm. for typical people. Um, and so we not only do academics, but we do, um, we build their social and emotional skills. We have therapies, occupational therapy and speech therapy. Um, we do life skills, so we teach cooking <laughs> and um, how to clean, they have Very to clean, good. and all about hygiene, um, personal safety, finance, daily living skills. We go swimming, because that's a big life skill to have. Mm -hmm. um, and we also do lots of community-based learning, so we mm. get out into the community, do lots of trips and then maybe go to um, a supermarket, learn how to shop, come back, cook the food, um, because I it's really this. important. I love this. As I told you before we started, I have a niece who's autistic, and I mean, she's functioning, but she will always have to live with her mother. She, she's, you, you're, you're with her two seconds, and you know that she has autism. She's yeah. got it pretty strongly, but she didn't have this opportunity, and it would have been wonderful if she had this opportunity to learn some of these life skills, because she, she doesn't know how to do a lot of things. I mean. Sheila's had to teach her every little thing, and it would have been nice if she had some help in that area as well. So this is fantastic that you guys take it even further. Like you said, you put the child in the middle and you build around the child. That is a perfect concept for autism. Yes, and it's really uh, beneficial to the parents too, because a lot of them, when their child is stressed, you know, if your child is stressed at school and they mm -hmm. come home and they bring that with them, and often that child is the only one in the class that's different, the only mm -hmm. one with autism. So yes. they don't make friends. Right. They miss that ability to interact with people like them. And so we find that the parents, when the children come to our school, that whole level of stress disappears. And children make friends. And one of the most beautiful things is when these children start having sleepovers Aww. and they meet up out of school wow, what a for blessing. the first time ever. And parents get to um, you know, network with each other and have that support. Because I have a 17 year old with autism, so I live okay. this journey too. Yes. So I can empathize very deeply with, with our parents and we share, oh, what, what do you do if? And, my child did this and you know oh driving me nuts you know mm -hmm. well how can we help and we all brainstorm together and we're a real family we really really care for the child and the extended family i love that and our children you know they say there's no bullying at jeremiah school i have friends i i'm happy um that's, it's just that's a blessing know. i gotta tell you because maria that was part of the problem is she she knows she was different and she'd say you know aunt linda i know i'm different but i don't know how to be like everybody else and i don't have any friends and i want to make friends so ha oh gosh what a that really is a blessing for autistic families to have yeah. jeremiah school now tell me a little bit joe about how people can be involved or learn more about it um, well, we have our website, which is www.jeremiahschool.com. Uh, that has a lot of information on it. We have a Facebook page. You just search Jeremiah School. Um, and um, all our contact details are on the website. Mm -hmm. um, we would love to have volunteers, but at the moment with COVID, we're not allowed to have any. Gotcha. <laughs> so 
<laughs> but in the in the normal world, you do take. We do, but yeah. also donations. We do. We are a private nonprofit. Um, we have to charge tuition, but that does not in any way cover the expenses of sure. a five to one teacher student ratio. So mm. we have to fundraise a great deal. So any donations are always well received. Um, oh, that would be wonderful. Yeah. So that's good to know. JeremiahSchool.com or call 423-915-9257 or JeremiahSchool.com. So if you just Google Jeremiah School, it'll come up. It you will. can find it. It's easy on social media today <laughs> to find yeah. things that we need. So JeremiahSchool.com and any donations would be wonderful. That is a blessing. So Joe, I really appreciate you being here today and teaching us a lot about Jeremiah School because I've heard little bits about it over the last year or two, but I really didn't know exactly what it was. So I have a feeling this school's really going to grow in the next few years. <laughs> I hope so. I mean, it's it's so needed and uh, we have great feedback from our, our students and our families and uh, you know, we, we love we love our students. They are like a family to us, and uh, we want to do our very best to give them the life that that they need to lead. I love that. And on that note, we'll we'll end for today. So JeremiahSchool.com, please feel free to give a donation, especially during these times when we can't have events and fundraisers or on staff volunteers coming to the school. So that would be helping out Jeremiah School so very much. Thank you, Joe, for being here today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And we'll it. be back in just a minute with another edition of A Closer Look.